We spoke to a number of people in a variety of positions in the organization, and all of them said they had never been subject to harassment from Mr. Gameshi, and they said, you know, each of them, that they'd never even heard of any other inappropriate behavior in the workplace on the part of Mr. Gameshi. Mr. Boyce, we've, we've done our own investigation. We have gone back and we have made contact with every single employee yeah. of Q that was working there this summer. All of them came back to us to say they had never been contacted, they were never asked any questions. And I'm going to leave that to Janice Rubin to, uh, to look into as part of her invest, uh, independent investigation. Well, you were conducting the investigation. Well, and I, I, can, and I can say, I can tell you that I've had conversations with a number of people, but I don't think this is the appropriate venue for us to get into a discussion of the specifics and who spoke to who. All right, let me just sort of lay this out for you. CBC's Fifth Estate did a in serious investigation into the Gian Gomeshi scandal, and then in turn interviewed CBC executives, like you just saw there, the head of CBC Radio Canada, Mr. Boyce, about what they knew and when. Bit of contradictory statements. Let's try to unpack and unravel a little bit for you. JJ McCullough is here. Justin Ling is here. Did either, for starters, uh, Justin, did you watch The Fifth Estate? No, I missed it. I, I, I don't own a TV. I'm one of those people, so I haven't seen it yet. Okay, but you're a prolific Twitterer. <laughs> you've probably followed it. You've seen maybe yeah. perhaps we just showed you that clip. I, I, I'm trying to make some sense of this because the timeline that they're giving us is that, and, and this was a headline that came out of the CBC's Fifth Estate Report on Friday over the weekend, that they knew back in June. But here's what's contradictory to that. We know from Canada Land, from Jesse Brown's work, that in March of this year, Gomeshi was at the Junos. He then told a produ two of his Q producers that this jilted ex-lover, that this story was coming out, the star was after him. Then this particular producer, who couldn't work for Gian Gomeshi anymore, he couldn't deal with what he was, um, he was so, quote, rattled by it. Sean Foley's his name. Justin, he then goes to executives after that event in March, so now perhaps April, Foley was shuffled away to another show. So it does, I guess my point is this, it doesn't fit in their timeline. Well, uh, yeah, uh, that's certainly true. I think this is certainly a case of the CBC finding what the CBC wants to find. I think uh, they got brought, I mean, I think Gomeshi took to them this narrative, this flimsy narrative of the idea that this jilted ex-lover was out to get him and that he just enjoys rough sex and it has nothing to do with abuse or sexual assault. And then every time someone came forward to them with evidence, they brushed it aside and said, no, no, no. Gomeshi already told us about this. I think, you know, they knew there was harassment happening. They knew that there was issues happening and they would rather just chalk up to, you know, personality conflicts or, you know, uh, workplace environment rather than admit that it was Gomeshi's fault here. Yeah. I, I, I think the interviews they did were obviously uh, insufficient and uh, with the wrong people. I think it's it's farcical for them to, to, to claim they did enough of an investigation, um, you know, Hindsight is 2020. We can't have expected them to know the whole uh, realm of what, what he was actually being accused of, but they should have done a better job, and they, they simply didn't. Of course, and to re recall, Gian Gomeshi now facing uh, criminal charges, as we found out last week. But again, uh, uh, JJ, let me just sort of read again from this piece from Candleland. The news rattled Sean Foley so badly in the days and weeks ahead, he had trouble writing Gian's essays. Ultimately, a colleague advised him to tell management. Again, this is going back to March and April of this year. Foley did so and he said in a meeting with senior CBC executives, he recounted the host's confessions. So eventually we know that what Sean Foley felt was Gian Gomeshi was ostensibly rehearsing his lines on him and his other colleague because it's then a story he goes on to tell Chris Boyce, who we just saw in the clip, and Chuck Thompson, another senior CBC executive. I, I just, I, and, then, and then the wisdom of them, you know, reporting on each other. I, I, this is just ludicrous to me. And then we add this whole Janice Rubin investigation. It's a mess. Yeah, uh, what, what, what was quite striking to me, and actually I did watch the, uh, what, I did watch the documentary, is just that there was a lot of like weird, squeamish, progressive nervousness about what a lot of people perceive to be judging someone's sex life. I mean, this is the thing, right? We have created this kind of idea in modern sort of liberal society that it is very bad to judge people for their sexual uh, proclivities. You know, that any sort of judgment over somebody's bedroom habits is sort of beyond the pale and that you should avoid doing it in any circumstance. And the idea that 
even when it entails beating women, well, if it's consensual, then, well, it's not really my business. And the idea that sexual violence can merely be a sort of a, a fetish that people should not have any particular uh, judgment towards. And that seems to be what comes up again and again when they're interviewing these people in the course of the documentary, is that they were constantly weighing their sort of, their, their uh, wanting to hold the man to account for his actions with their sort of anxiety about being sort of prissy and putting their noses into his private life. And I think that that is something that I think this has caused a lot of us to sort of have a national conversation about, is that it is possible to go too far in terms of sexual fetishes and, and merely the, uh, the defense of this is my kink or this is what I'm into or it's all consensual is often not good enough. You know, Justin, you've been a journalist for a long time. You've been covering all levels of government and, you know, part of that coverage would, it would include the public broadcaster and the CBC. But what I find fascinating unfolding right now, and I want to get your take on it in the, in the last sort of minute we have left here, is that it's almost as if CBC is going out of their way to, to be very hard on either themselves or, or to reveal as much as they possibly can. And I understand that, you know, the Fifth Estate likes to, to sort of separate themselves from, you know, the core of, of CBC, the, their own investigative arm. But I just find it really, you know, not, not distasteful is not the word, but just odd that they've gone to the lengths in which they have. Um, and at some point, it is a billion dollars of public money. It is the public broadcaster. This investigation that's going on internally may not render the answers that the public needs. Yeah, at a certain point, it feels like self-cannibalization. I mean, it, they're turning so inward, so aggressively inward, that it, it does kind of feel like they're they're attacking their own mores at a certain point. Um, you know, that being said, they are, you know, in essence, a public broadcaster, and they do need to hold a level of transparency and accountability beyond that of private enterprise. So mm -hmm. I think they have that in mind. That being said, they face criticism for many years for not being transparent like they ought to be and, and acting like a private broadcaster on the public dime. So. I think this is a combination of them saying, um, you know, this is a very, uh, very scandalous issue, but it's also an era where the CBC has to fight for every dollar and justify every expense. So uh, I, I think if they weren't doing enough to investigate this, they would uh, face a lot of criticism for, uh, you know, uh, for, for not acting in the best interest of the Canadian public. So. This is definitely an interesting scenario. It'll be interesting to see how they, they, they deal with this going forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not tremendously optimistic, but it, they're, they're showing signs of good faith, even if it does seem a little excessive. Okay.